Here we go, no, here we go. This time, 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 What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Chris Hampton. Welcome to episode 12 of the Power Company Podcast. We've got 12 episodes, and it's not even been a year. In fact, we're like, we're still two months shy of a year, so I'd say we're doing pretty damn well. I'm on the road. I am headed to Red River Gorge next, where I will be emceeing Rocktoberfest. Uh, it's one of my favorite events of the year just because it's home, and those are my people, and I get to see everybody and I love it there. I just wrapped up uh, 24 Hours of Horseshoe Hell emceeing that event. And, you know, no offense to any other events in the climbing world, but uh, they're down in Arkansas at Horseshoe Canyon Ranch. They definitely have the craziest after party of all. So if you have a chance to go, you should go and don't skip the after party. Anyway, moving on, I, I want to give a big shout out to you guys uh, for all your support of the board meetings podcast that Nate and I just recently put out. I got lots of great feedback, lots of good comments, and we definitely intend to keep that thing going. I've got several more already recorded and ready to go. So we'll keep those going in between episodes for as long as possible. And speaking of support, uh, check us out on patreon.com. That's patreon.com slash powercompanypodcast. And what that site is is basically a way for you to support us and you know help us get this thing out, help us keep it sponsor and commercial free, and help us keep the episodes coming. You know, the more you support and the more you want it, the more we're gonna do it. We love doing this thing. So we'll keep it going if that's what you guys want. Check us out on there, patreon.com slash powercompanypodcast, or you can click the podcast link at powercompanyclimbing.com. And you can, you can give a dollar, you can give $5. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate it. Um, let's move on. Let's get, this, uh, let's get this thing rolling. Today, uh, I've got a great, great conversation. Probably the most fun conversation I've had, to be honest, with uh, Will Anglin and Roland Chin, who are both coaches out at Earth Treks Golden in Colorado. And uh, Will's got a great blog, if you haven't seen it. I believe it's willanglin.squarespace.com. Definitely look him up. If you just you know punch Will Anglin into your Googler, you will definitely find him. And he's also one of the owners over at Tension Climbing, where they make really great wooden holds. And he and Ben Spanith... Uh, both bring some great things to the table and are putting out really high quality training tools. So definitely check them out at Tension. And actually, I need to talk to Will about trading a, uh, a power company tee for a Tension tee because I really like their tees. Um, anyway, all right, let's get into this thing. Have fun. Maybe don't know. Maybe don't. Holds are not something that you just grab and pull on. It's about moving around holds. It's about linking position to position. This time to build power. 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 All right, so POE. We're not even going to tell them what that means yet. So okay, sweet. What I want to start with is. Will started explaining to me <clears throat> POE and exactly how you came about it. So let's start there. Like you two have radically different styles. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> lean, so, in, lean in if you can. Oh. So Will is like, he's like tall and lanky and not very strong. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. He's, he's pretty weak. Honestly. It's true. Um, but he's really good at understanding movement. And making it happen all the time. Whereas I am really bad at understanding movement. But he's really strong. <laughs> but you're really but strong. I'm really strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been it's been a learning process for me for sure. Like like two years ago, I didn't know how to keep my feet on. Well, let's let's um, 
Let's talk about how strong you are first. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm really strong. <laughs> because, you, because I know you want to talk about that. <laughs> sure. Um, how tall are you first off? Uh, about 5'8". And you can touch the rim. Yeah, I can hit rim. Right. <laughs> so, so there's that. Yeah. I can wave at the net. That's about as far as I get. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, and Will said you have this propensity for for explosive movement like you're just yeah you're just good at it's throwing ins- things around and it's being nuts. dynamic yeah it's like i was a gymnast when i was younger and i just really like moving fast and like catching things yeah <laughs> like like little jumps where you have to like this is gonna be really visual sorry but <laughs> you have to like jump into a small position and then hold like a gnarly swing that's like my favorite thing ever Gotcha. <clears throat> like jumping from really down low into like double gas stones and going like full horizontal. That's like the best. <laughs> I love that so much. That sounds so heinous to yeah. me. Whereas Will can like keep his feet on until it's too far away. And I can't do that. You know, he can like, like go tip to tip, like toe to toe to finger. Right. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. You just jump and leave. I just jump. Feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then Will doesn't understand at all what happens when like you leave the wall. As yeah. soon as his points are off the wall, like he doesn't understand how to move around. Whereas, yeah. Like, I understand like the spatial stuff more than he does, I guess. So if you're in the gym and you're lifting or <clears throat> campusing or mm-hmm. whatever, Roland, you're generally the stronger dude. Yeah. Almost a hundred percent of the time. And By you, a really large margin. <laughs> and, then if, yeah. and then if you go outside, that flips. And Will becomes the better yes. climber. Which is frustrating. <laughs> so <Ha>! let's, <laughs> let's, let's just lay it out a little bit. When you do go outside and mm. you're climbing, what, what are the grades roughly? Just a, a rough estimate of what you generally can climb outside. In a day, it's anywhere from like 10 to 12. Um, but if I'm projecting, it's like 13 for, for boulders. Okay. Um, for sport routes, I haven't done many recently, but it's like... I can I can probably put down like mid fourteen in a couple of sessions. Okay. And your grades will are about where? Pretty similar. So <clears throat> I Do you can, just get it done faster? It, do you where does the when you go outside the rolls flip and you're the, the better climber? So I generally do the harder stuff. I don't want to say I do the harder stuff faster. It, it really depends on style. Like there will be a nine and Roland will do it in two tries and it'll take me 15. And then there will be... And then and that's generally like a jumpy style. Yeah, like yeah. jumping to a crimp right. is the most recent <clears throat> example. And then, so he'll do that faster, but there's a lot less of that. <clears throat> Sorry. It's all good. Do it. There's a lot less of that pure dynamic just obliterating the rock kind of movement outside and if there is it's generally not the whole boulder problem there's always some sort of other aspect to your climbing that you have to have in order to actually top the boulder out or finish the some sort of finesse you have to use yeah yeah. and whatever it is and i typically excel more at those things and so the like those kind of boulders I'll do a lot more quickly, um, like the like the exfoliator, yeah, or evil backwards, or, or evil backwards, those kind of things. Like I tried the exfoliator like a couple times at the end of a session with you know tape on most of my fingers and everything, and then was like, man, it's kind of hard, but like I think I can do it, and then came back and did it in like a couple tries one evening and it's how many times have you tried that first move <laughs> oh my god so many so many I times can't, i can't even touch it but like the rest of the boulder is totally fine but yeah like the part of the the part of the boulder where you just like crush the holds like he just no big deal hikes it like no <laughs> right. big deal but the first move requires like very precise foot and core <clears throat> tension and all of these things have to go right at the same time and right. then you stick the move and it's not that it's actually not that hard when everything happens at the right time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess that's probably what I would describe my style as is trying to make things happen at the right time. I can do that yeah. pretty well. Have a lot of things come together 
for like one move or one sequence of moves. But when it's pure, simple, like grab this bad hold and rip it to this bad hold, I'm pretty vulnerable to just not being able to do it because right. I'm not strong enough. <clears throat> yeah, I often I often describe climbing movement like even a single move as like a flip book there there's a yeah. bunch of different things that have to go on at one you know to all line up to make the move happen correctly mm. and and i'm actually just about to put out on instagram a an actual flip book that took me for fucking ever to finish <laughs> you have no idea how that's hard it so is to cool. make a flip book but at any rate that's how i think of climbing moves so it sounds like that's what you're good at will is connecting all those pages on the flip books and Roland, you're good at skipping the middle pages and just jumping yeah, from the beginning to the end. Exactly. Like we've talked about this a couple of times before, and it's like if more than one thing has to happen at once, I can't do it. But if it's right. one thing that has to happen and it's really hard, like no big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I can do yeah. that. Yeah, and that's really frustrating for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And did that? I know a couple of years ago you really worked on, like you dove into the minutia of jumping. And being more dynamic was Roland kind of the the thing that led you into that. One hundred and ten percent, yeah. All of it. <laughs> I we because we session on the blackboard at Earth Treks and Golden like all the time. That's like our main thing, right? And very quickly it was like, yo, you suck at jumping. Like yeah, you're so yeah. bad at it. How have you got this far? like looking like that when you jump like that's insane uh and that's like you're pretty verbatim like what he he was like you suck like you need to deal with that because it's not okay uh and it has taken me so so long a long time and it's (laughs) still not good (laughs) and so much effort no and i'm still not very good at it like i can i can do it enough to where like when i have to Right. I can generally like squeak it out, um, but it's not your go-to style. No, I mean while while y'all were warming up and we were there's like a V nine one move just dyno oh on the back side of so the <laughs> exfoliator <laughs> boulder. Roland did it in like two tries. Yeah, or something really whatever, fast. Whatever, like really fast when when he did it. Because one he's move, taller. It's a head. jump. Like right. it's far, and like I probably tried it five or ten times Didn't before I even hit the lip and then I like covered the lip and did it so just terribly like I hit it I swung all the way out I like kicked him and almost kicked him <laughs> off the top of the other <laughs> boulder like, it was, like, like, like uh... it was <clears throat> catastrophic and we're like all right we're like we have to come back for this but like <laughs> I will go back and I will do that boulder yeah and I think that's important is you know one thing I really love about climbing is that there are different styles that work for the exact same thing yeah. You know, so Will, you can do it in your more controlled style and Roland's going to find his way to jump through it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, but occasionally you're going to run up against that point where you need the other style. You need to be proficient. Yes. And and that's kind of what we're talking about here today, right? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's get back into POE. <clears throat> and how did you, when you realized you had different styles, you're trying to basically teach each other the opposing style, right? Yeah. What did you come across that led you to POE? It's all about the position. Position over everything. Which is what POE Which is stands what, for. Yeah, right. POE. And there's a sick gang sign for <laughs> it. There, there's you a gang sign for this. Them, yeah. doing it. The Earth Trek's <laughs> kids know the gang it. sign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, so it, we found that it had... It kind of became a common thread in both of our deficiencies as climbers. And also we started to pick it out basically in in everything and it started to drive us a little bit insane. And we can and, see that. Yeah. yeah. And now <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more insane. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for for me, I guess I'll describe it in the way that it applied to me learning how to jump. Mm. And you can do it. In the way that you're still learning cool. how to, keep you're still your learning feet how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, my in, in the way that you still suck at using. Yeah, your feet. Exactly. <laughs> that's well, what I heard. Yeah. yeah. So, for I guess for one, I am not very explosive. I'm not powerful at all. I can 
get to a point where like I have like some semblance of power where it's like, oh, maybe you're powerful. But it took me a ridiculous amount of work just to get a little bit. Right. And so even just jumping, like not even catching it, like just the simple act of like straightening my legs quickly in order to propel myself <laughs> in a direction, like that's really difficult for me to do. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's really so, hard. So like you know when you're jumping and you like your legs are bent and then they're straight, like that whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's I, no yeah, good. like that, like try jumping without straightening your legs, and that's really, what you look like when you're trying to yeah, throw to something. And, and then yeah. and then make it worse because it's really bad. <laughs> it's it's bad. like flaily and uh, but yeah, just so just jumping first of all. Uh, I had to figure out how to do that. And a lot of that involved positioning my hips in the right place so that when I did straighten my legs as hard as I could, which still is not very hard, I would actually start going in the right direction. Right. Um, that, that was the first thing. <clears throat> and then once I started getting to the hold, it was like, well, you're still not sticking them. You're touching them, but... No one cares about that. Like, if you're not if you're not doing it, then right. it's pointless. So, what I started to realize is I would jump. Well, I use that term loosely, and <laughs> like just barely snag some thing with like totally straight arm. My whole body's straight. My leg is straight. And I'm just like this huge, awkward, spindly pendulum and just go whipping off the wall and like no one's gonna hold anything like that right like we would do days where it'd be like let's feel really let's have will feel really bad about himself and we would do <laughs> jumps yeah. to one-handed jugs and roland would just smash them all and i'd fall off every single one like i can't even jump and grab a jug one-handed it's insane would it be would every time be that you were catching it and then swinging off yep. yeah okay yeah, yeah. it was like and I knew I was doing it, and that made it even worse. And so it, I mean, it took a lot of focus. It took a lot of berating from Roland, which I appreciate. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> you my dog. <laughs> you my dog and everything. Uh, but it became more about the position I was jumping into, like occupying a certain point in space right. with, you know, bent elbows, like engaged shoulders, and so that when I caught the hold, I was there. I was set into that position. Right. Positioning your body at the end, not yeah, just at the beginning. Not jumping yep. and just trying to get desperately my hand on the hold and then deal with the fallout afterwards, but actually jump, move my body into a position where I can actually interact helpfully with the hold <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to rather than just like being like, I just have to get my hand on it because that's not good enough. You can't just get your hand on it. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like, oh my goodness. I, yeah, because when you're climbing, you're not just grabbing holds. No, right, like, for there's, sure. Like, there's a million other if things that happen. nickel yep. for every hold <laughs> whole, I've touched whole flip book. but could yeah, never exactly, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah you gosh. know, when Chris Sharma first kind of burst onto the scene, I'm old enough to remember that. Mm. And You're old. Yeah, I'm old. And he, <laughs> there was a lot of shit being talked from all these old schoolers about he doesn't know how to climb, you know, he just jumps around. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I remember an article breaking down Sharma's new technique, mm -hmm. you know, and he would, he would drop a foot back when he was doing these big jumps, drop a foot off the wall. So his body became more vertical instead yeah. of like hugging the wall when he jumped. So, so he would end up not swinging at all at the end of these throws, you know, and that's when it first occurred to me that that, that jumpy, powerful style, you know, had real merit and was a real technique that yeah. if you can position your body before you leave the ground, before you leave the holds and, you know, turn up at the next hold or land at the next hold in the correct position, then that's when the move happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not there. just to launch yourself there and be strong. You know, that's yeah, not sure. all it is. So it, it's not that Roland is just strong. It's just that he understood a different type of position than you understood. Yeah, like right? I'm just way better at <clears throat> jumping between holes than Will is. Right. Uh, for like a lot of reasons. Yeah. I mean, even like being in gymnastics 
and like learning how to control your body in the air. That's something I never had. Yeah. Any any I mean, aerial other awareness you learn yeah. in gymnastics. Yeah, it's any, really important. Anything I did before climbing involved like feet planted on the ground. Like I wrestled, I played soccer and yeah. other nonsense sports like that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> nonsense sports like yeah, that exactly <laughs> um man if you've seen <clears throat> pictures of me like jumping like cliff jumping like into the water it's it's, dis- it's disgusting <laughs> it it's looks like, like, like you're falling to your yeah, death like i just don't yeah. i don't have a good awareness of like once i'm not connected to something like if i can have like a point on the rock awesome if i got two for sure uh (laughs) like all everything makes sense but as soon as i'm no longer like touching the rock with any control right being able to manipulate my body while i'm in the air or anticipate how i'm gonna have to do it prior to actually like disconnecting from the rock that takes (laughs) I can do it, but it takes so many more tries and like so much effort and so much attention just to like barely do it right. It yeah. does not come natural at all. Where for Roland, I think he's totally at home in the air. Like, I mean, the crazy like dinos and stuff that he comes up with. I'm like, I just, that would take me a week to do what you just yeah. did first try. <laughs> right. Right. So jumping's not just. Like anybody can jump, anybody can throw themselves into the air. Yeah. They might look ridiculous, but they can throw themselves into the air. So there's a lot more to it than, than just, just and being strong, yeah. just leaping, you know. Mm-hmm. So Roland, when you were, you know, when Will's trying to belittle you, <laughs> since you've been belittling him so much, and and coach you into mm-hmm. learning this newer style for you. What what are you learning? What's going through your head? I'm learning so much. <laughs> um, just from like, <clears throat> especially when we started too, because I couldn't keep my feet on um, like like two or three years ago. Um, mm-hmm. And then we will would like do a tension move on the blackboard at like 55 or whatever. Um, and then I'd try it and I would just go, bam, my feet would just pop off and hit the ground. and would be like, you'll just keep your feet on. Violently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I like, <laughs> I didn't understand at all what that meant. So we had to like break it down. And it's, there's like so much that happens. Um Cause it's like, you have to keep your core tight, which I didn't know about until I had to keep my feet on. <laughs> right. You just um, generate the momentum. And yeah. And then, then I was just like, and then my tighten back when and you catch. close enough to like keep yeah. my foot on or whatever. Yeah. Um, and like when you catch hold, it's like, <clears throat> it's the opposite of when you jump, when you try to keep your feet on. Cause your leg has to be bent. So you have a strong leg to pull in with mm-hmm. and your arm has to be straight when you catch. So you can stay like over the foot. Um, and I didn't know that until like a couple of weeks ago. specifically on on shuhari out in um crested butte because the crux is like um it's like a hypertension move off of like a smear spot between like bad pinches yeah um and it's insane like like i could i could reach everything like really comfortably um but the way i was trying it until like last time i was on it i was going up and i was trying to straighten my leg and catch the pinch with a bent arm um like you do when you try to jump or like something powerful like you want to be like your upper body is in a perfect <clears throat> position. Your lower body is just like, fuck it. And it goes wherever. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but I finally realized that you had to like basically sit on the foothold and then just move your hand. Um, yep. You have to be really, really good with pulling with your feet. Exactly. Manipulating yeah. your body with your feet. Yep. And like keeping your hips in, keeping your core tight. And then once you hit the hold, like the move's not over still, um, which is really similar to jumping. Because mm-hmm. um, you have to like press the foot into the wall and position yourself under the hold and then like keep your core tight and basically like do a front lever on the smear. And if um, you push too hard, then you pop off the foot. Then you're going to pop off. And you don't yep. push hard enough. Then you slip. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and if you pull too hard in the pinch and you pull your foot off the hold, like there's so much that has to happen. Um, and I was able to stick it like one time. Yeah. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah. When, um, well, we were up in, you know, you guys were there up in Lincoln Lake today and it was my first time bouldering on granite really other than, you know, Vita Vu cracks and Yosemite really like count. 15, 20 <laughs> years ago or something. Mm-hmm. But I was really paying attention to, you know, bouldering with Nate. He's, he's really good at pulling with his feet mm-hmm. and really good at trusting those little glassy feet. We saw that. So <laughs> good on you. <laughs> that was awesome. You know, I, I really <laughs> try to pay a lot of attention to that mm-hmm. because being a, a Red River sport climber, 
most of my you know recent climbing career i i generally move with like this weird abbreviated momentum and just catch holds you know because you can just glom your feet into whatever right exactly so i'm i watch his tension and try to mimic that and i'm rarely successful at it but but it's cool to see that there are different styles that work and to see that there are guys who are super strong who are also learning who just don't get it (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah. So when you're teaching these things to your kids, how do you how do you break it down to them? This POE, I guess the, the same way more or less actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we try and be blunt but caring, <laughs> <laughs> and it's for them. I guess the way that we go about it or try to start to guide them into it is talking about. Holds are not something that you just grab and pull on. It's about moving around holds. It's about linking position to position. And if you're in the right position, you'll be able to hold the hold. But if you have your hand on the hold and you're not in the right position, it's going to feel terrible. It's going to feel really hard. And when you come to me and you've tried a boulder problem two or three times and you're like, I can't do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not even close like it takes and it's especially like when you're learning something and and we are both very familiar with that because we're smack in the middle of it it takes a lot of attempts it takes a lot of attention and you just have to try it a lot of times and you know it when you feel it i think people understand that inherently like they'll try a move five, 10, 15 times, like, this is insane. And each time, like, after every couple of tents, you're like, you know, maybe try this. Turn the direction that your heel is. Point your knee the opposite direction. I get that a ton. Right. People are backstepping stuff that they should be squared up to or yep. vice versa. And lean into the hold. Like, if your hips are straight out from the wall or your knees are pointing straight into the wall and you bend your leg, where are your hips going to go? Straight back. That's not great. And so trying to get them to think about moves as positions to be in rather than, oh, that crimp's really hard to hold, or I'm bad at slopers. Be like, you're not bad at slopers. You're really strong. Like you're really good at you're good at all of these holds. It's not the hold that's the issue. It's not the wall angle that's the issue. It's this more global thing that is important in any type of climbing you know, regardless of discipline, regardless of hold type, regardless of angle or anything, rock type, it doesn't matter. You just have to be in the right positions. And when you are, things tend to go your way. And when you're not, they do not go your way. Yeah. And you know, I think everybody, (laughs) I think everybody experiences that. Like you, you see it or hear it in the gym so much with people going, Oh, something just happened there. Like, yeah. For some reason, that just worked. Yeah, what was my, that? My new favorite thing to say, because I only get to say it like once or twice in a season to a kid is like, did you feel that? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they'll yeah. like do something and be like, oh, and I'll be like, right? Yeah, for <laughs> that sure. That was it. And like, you, you get it. <laughs> yeah, and if, you're, and if you're paying attention beforehand, you know, if you're really trying to figure it out, you're going to know what that small change was or at least have an idea and be able to maybe recreate it or get closer to recreating mm-hmm. it. You can start narrowing it down. For exactly. Sure. And I think that's really important to go into it paying attention to the body positions mm-hmm. instead of just saying the, the go-to always seems to be, I just need to pull harder, you know, or I just need Which to try is, harder or I just yeah. need to, yeah. you know, whatever. But it, it always comes down to muscle and strength. You know? Yeah, I think it seems to be the go-to. People always want like the the easy way out, right? Yep. And the the easy way out is usually like I could just be stronger, but it's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> you could do that right now. Yeah, like, you, you have to get better. Correctly. Yeah. Um, I had something smart to say, but I totally forgot. I'll I'll remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that like kind of like exactly what you're talking about. That thought process of not fail like don't fail on a move and the first thing is you're like oh well my fingers aren't strong enough i'm gonna hang board more or you couldn't squeeze those two holds together hard enough so you're like oh well my like arms or my chest or whatever it is 
it's so easy to not do something and then immediately be like, oh, like if I could just one arm that, like, of course I would do it. Be like, right. yeah, sure, but that's not the answer. And having people think about what they're doing and pay attention to what they're doing. Like when you fall off, like try and figure out why you fell off. If you fall off and you're not trying to figure out why you fell off, that was a completely wasted attempt. Yeah. And don't go to the, like, you know, like Roland just said, people want the easy way out. Don't just go to the first easy answer, you know, like, exactly, yeah. like Nate and I were talking on the way down from Lincoln Lake today about we're, we're working on a core ebook for mm-hmm. core training for climbing that, that kind of goes into how to activate and use your core effectively instead of just doing ab exercises, you know, oh, yeah. because um, I hear all the time in the gym when people's feet pop off them saying, you know, I need to do more core workouts. No. You know? And that's not the case. You need to, you need <laughs> yeah. to learn how to use your core better. I have, yeah. I have just like you were that. just saying, Roland. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so like <laughs> the same thing I just went through, um, like maybe six to nine months ago. Um, I didn't know like what proper plank form was. Right. Like, my core has always been strong, but just like as happenstance, not because I was doing good planks. Like I didn't know that you had to like pull your ribs in and like get your hips close to close to like your nipples basically. Right. Um, and as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, I get it. And then like, it was like a big breakthrough. Like I keep my feet on way, way differently and I could do front levers all of a sudden. Yeah. And like, you're, and you were a gymnast. So yeah, I was a gymnast. Like so I'm, having a hollow body, something you were already familiar with, but yeah. you, you hadn't transferred that over to climbing. Yeah, exactly. Or like I just had never known how to do it and I got by on other stuff. Right. Because you're strong. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm so strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just adorable. And just so, so cute. cute. He's the cute one. And super single. So. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Just, he yeah. likes long walks on the beach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like but it, coffee and rap. So, <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> I'm basically perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember what I was going to say earlier too. If I can do it. Okay, do it. Um, I think people want the easy way out a lot of the time, but a lot of the time they also want somebody else to do it for them. For um, sure. Like a lot of people aren't willing to put in the time. I speak people just generally. Like I spend a lot of time in the gym and hear a lot. Yeah. Just complaints. Yep. Um, but a lot of times people like want an answer right away, and like with with climbing especially, it's such a, it's such like an in your head thing that nobody can tell you how to do it. All they can do is like, like explain how they felt when they did it, <clears throat> give you like some pointers. But like when it comes down to it, like it's all um, on you. Yeah. And, yeah, and totally. nobody, nobody can be like, oh, you just do this and then you just do it. Like yeah. there's, there's so much more that has to happen like in your head to make a movement like go down. We yeah, get there's that so many parts. all yeah. the time mm-hmm. with uh, the kids specifically because they're kids. And, and we're there to help them. Yeah. We're, totally. we're like the dudes with the answers. Um, but they're, they're always like, or, or we had one kid in particular who would just break down. He was really young and be like, why won't you just tell me the answer? Right. Why won't you just People tell me what beta. to do exactly so that I can how. do it? Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's not. I can't. There's no, there's no word. There's no phrase. There's nothing I can say right now that you'll just be like, oh, and then do it. Yeah. It's like, I can help nudge you towards like in the direction I think you should go based on like what I've done and you know my experience of watching you climb and stuff but it really comes down to you like are you paying attention to what you're doing are you trying hard are you trying as hard as you can or as hard as you want to try or as hard as you feel like you should have to or try or in the right way like, yeah or like yeah. it it's it's so much more complex than that and I think the more important thing is not for you to do the move but to figure out how to figure out how to do the move like what what is the thought process what do you have to notice how can you get yourself to figure out what you're not doing and what you need to do and how you need to do it yeah steve bechtel who i've talked to a lot um loves to talk about the investment of training meaning you're it's like putting money in the bank you know it's not it's not something that's readily available right now you're you're gonna cash that in later and you're gonna yep. you're gonna reap the benefits later. And I think what people want is this immediate transaction, like put the money on the table, give me the product. <sighs> yeah. You know? I feel that. I I mean, and I've been training a lot for a long time. And <laughs> every I mean I, I don't I can't tell you the specifics. I don't know, but it every single time, like I can go back into my training logs and go back into like my calendars 
and I feel like every time, like I look, I see that it works. I see that it works for me. Like I see my numbers go up. I see my sends go up. I'm like climbing harder things and I can look back and I can see all of it. But right now I'm like, I hate this phase that I'm in. Like I don't, there, there's no metric to measure. Yeah, it. I don't yeah, feel no. good. Like I, but I know that I'm keeping myself diminished. Like I'm keeping myself under this workload because in a week I'm going to switch over to this thing. And then in four weeks I'm going to switch over to this thing. And then in two weeks, then I'm going to feel good. Right. And it's every single time I have to like, like, Will, it's going to be fine. <laughs> And do it's you, hard for me to do. Do you do that in a I, Bruce Lee voice? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or do you do it in Roland's I, voice? I, yeah, it's, my so voice it, for sure. it's a combination. <laughs> it's like a really mean Bruce Lee with a low voice. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh man, yeah, and I and I know it works, and it's still hard for me to accept it sometimes. And so yeah, like I I, I feel for people in that way. Like I I know it sucks, and I think my I don't I'm not naturally talented at any sort of thing in climbing i think the one thing that like i have is i'm really stubborn and uh like i don't like not being able to do things and i'll put in the work i'll do whatever it takes to get to where i want to go and you're and, honest with yourself yeah i yeah, I think that's, I think that's super sometimes important. Maybe sometimes maybe too, too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that can uh, happen too. You know, Nate Nate called me. I don't remember if you called me or texted me, but he asked me this past winter, how many times in a given session do you think you give a hundred percent effort? And I thought about it for a while, and I, I think my answer was zero to three. Three being a miracle session. You know, because say you're in rolling shoes and you're, you know, jumping with all you've got at this problem where you're smearing and and throwing to a horrible pinch, but and you still can't hold it. Were you giving 100% effort? You were giving what you had and what you knew, but but you weren't giving the right efforts. You know, Mm -hmm. so in my mind, that's not necessarily 100% effort. Yeah, right. you're, I was gonna, you're you're missing a big piece of it. Yeah, because like I was gonna add on to that because my my 100 like physical tryhard is like eyes closed, everything flexed. Right, <laughs> <laughs> like that's awful for climbing. That'll never get you anywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, so 100 percent effort when you're climbing is like a totally different thing, um, and it's like such a rarity. It's like um, well, since we're giving, yeah. since we're trying to, you know, hook you up here over the podcast, is that how you meet girls too? It is. Eyes, <laughs> eyes, eyes closed, closed eyes everything flexed. flexed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, oh. yeah, it it's, uh, <laughs> is it, does it? No, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just saying, yeah. you still single. So, I'm still we're working single. on it. We're working on it. We're, we are. We're going to set it. up a hotline, yeah. and all the women are going to call in. Call for Roland, Roland. <laughs> with a oh, W. Man. So as we all know. Yeah, I. When it comes to trying hard, I like. I know I've tried a hundred percent three times, maybe five times yep. in like sixteen years. Right. And I remember like some of the. It's. It's insane. It's a really cool feeling. And when you do it and you think back on it, you're like, that was it. Like, that's insane. And it's learning how to try hard and try hard in the right way is an ongoing thing. I, don't, I mean, yeah, I agree totally because those, you know, those zero to three times per session that I would give 100%, now I might look back and say, Oh, maybe I wasn't really giving hundred percent because this piece was still missing. You know, I didn't even know that that piece existed at the time, but now mm. I'm beginning to understand it. I, I was just trying to think like to when I was I've ever given like a hundred true percent for climbing, and I think it's never. <laughs> Honestly, mm-hmm. like I either try hundred percent and like flail off the boulder mm-hmm. and just like flex my way to the ground, yeah. or, <laughs> or I like or I figure out something else to do, and it's like totally yeah. fine. Or I, like learn the move, and it's like not a big deal. Um, yeah, for me coming from a, you know, a Red River sport climbing background, it was always I want it to feel easy. 
Yeah. You know, I want to just execute it perfectly. And, and I would find myself and I still find myself if I'm in the gym or even outside, if it's, if I know, if I can see that I'm not going to be able to smooth my way through it, I might just quit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a move huge on to something else. Cause it's I, I grew easy to fall into too. that. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because when you send sport climbs, it's like it's like you're on a cloud almost sometimes. Yeah. Like you're you're tired, but you're like totally fine with it. Yep. <laughs> and like you just kind of cruise to the top. But with bouldering, it's like it's way harder all the yeah, time. Yeah, it is. It definitely yeah. is. I spent my whole last winter learning to try hard. Because I can't as again, as a Red River sport climber, I know I'm bashing Red River sport climbers here basically, <laughs> but I'm with you. Yeah. Um get them. You know, I, it was really hard for me to leave the ground trying hard. Yeah. Like, like the, the, the route that I was just trying in, in Wild Iris, the old guidebook used to have the description that said, step off the block and go boom. <laughs> and I can't do that. Yeah. Like, that's really hard for me to pull off the ground and just try super hard. It's, that's, yeah, I think that's hard. I mean, I hope that's hard for everybody. We're, we're like really <laughs> terrible. Uh but it's difficult to do that. I especially find myself doing it sport climbing because you always feel like, oh, I'm like, I've got to save it for something. Right. Like, what are you saving it for? <clears throat> do it. Like, just do it. And then if you have gas to the top, you have gas to the top. Like, there's a time for efficiency and there's a time to just rip just, it. Yeah, just rip it. Right. And I think when you're learning all of it, you can combine that super try hard with your new awareness of position, you know, your new POE, and you can make the two things work together. But you have to get really good at both of them first. Yes. You know, because I know when I, when I try to talk myself into trying hard, I get stupid. Like Mm, my climbing looks stupid, you know. And when I try to focus on my positions and just move efficiently like i like to i'm not able to try hard I, so trying I to combine those way. two things um we yeah. always joke that like i'm just mentally super weak <laughs> like i'm really bad at like trying hard or like dealing with pain or like not or failure or failure I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this part out because you're not gonna get any dates this way oh yeah i'm like basically just a super masculine dude like it's not a big deal <laughs> um like i get shot uh, a lot, <laughs> I get so shot it's, a it's lot. just casual that's why you like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly um mm-hmm. but it's like trying hard is the hardest thing to do honestly um yeah. and in the right ways like in being able to deal with the fact that you're trying hard mm-hmm. is really difficult and i find yeah. that like every single day that gets in, I think, to a really important thing, which is the difference between seeking success and seeking mastery. And that's been something that Roland and I and, and our, like, basically everyone we climb with, we try and focus on because it's so much more fun that way, I <laughs> yeah. think. Like, it's, I mean, su- sending something is great, but... It, it's it's super, not that great. <laughs> it's fleeting. Like like you get to the top and you're like, all right, cool. But when you when you worked <laughs> yeah. for it and it was something that and sending like, isn't necessarily mastery is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. no, yeah, success right. is not mastery at all. Uh, it's cool when those two things combine. I think that's for me at least the most fulfilling feeling, and why I seek out stuff that is difficult, like. Uh, again, like just to bring it back to Lincoln Lake today, trying Great War for Civilization, that thing is brutal for me. It represents almost everything that I'm bad at. Like with the exception of like a really like like pure jump move, it's got everything I suck at. And I could just stop working on it. Like I've probably put eight sessions into it now, nine sessions and not done it. And I've got stomped for a whole season on it. And it's the most time I've put into a boulder problem days wise, I think ever. And I could very easily, well, I I couldn't, but a person could very (laughs) easily just not 
do that boulder. Like go do the crimp tension boulder or, you know, whatever it is that you're good at. Like I could go do another 8B relatively quickly, but it doesn't, it won't mean anything to me. Right. Where so, so when I do me. this, I'm going to like lose it <laughs> yeah. and I will so, do it. So in the process of working on Great War for Civilization, are you employing these same POE oh, yeah. ideas and tactics? And you're not just going, I need to be stronger to, to grab mm -hmm. this hold or whatever. No, because I am stronger. I'm stronger than when I first tried it, but I'm still having the same kinds of issues. Because they're not than Zach, <clears throat> yeah. who just takes a shit on it. Yeah, he, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I was like, I can't do this move. It's like, how do you do it? And he just... I didn't even warm up. It was like the first move of the day that he did. He just put his shoes on and did it. And I was like, oh, like, thanks. And it's not like he just barely Ass, did it. He, like, didn't, <laughs> he didn't just barely do it. He got up and just went like this and watch like that. And then just, <laughs> right. just did it. And then and it just was went amazing. to the top. It was insane. And so, yeah, like I've basically had to break down every single move, minus the first move, which, you just, which is just easy. But every <laughs> other move... Other than the first move, I've had to like break down and be like, all right, my foot's here. Why is it here? Like, I'm like, I have to hold this crimp. I need to lean off of it in a particular way. Uh, just today, like, I finally, now I finally feel like I can say I'm close to doing it. And then the next couple of times I try it, I'll end up doing it. Because today I you unlocked. Heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> the two days ago, I finally figured out how to lean off of this left hand crimp in the seam in order to do what for me is one of the hardest moves but it's the move that zach just dookies on all the time right. uh right and you just said i figured out how to lean off of it it wasn't yeah. i got stronger and was able to hold this crimp in the seam mm -hmm. it was i figured out the position exactly the exact angle i needed to be at leaning off this crimp to make it work yeah, so I figured out how to lean off of it, but I was still not doing the move because I wasn't initiating the move right. And it's particular, like you just have to do it right. And when you do it right, it's fine. And I, but I, I knew I was missing something and I was trying and I watched Zach try it a couple more times and well, not try it. I watched him just do it, <laughs> uh, which is really helpful if you're trying to learn is, someone, something helpful. and someone can yeah. just do it. You're like, oh, sick. Like, all right, do it again. <laughs> Let me watch from this angle. And and today I was really excited because I figured out like combined the lean with this little like exchange of pressure between the feet and this like little hip toss, like micro kind of dead point, and then you just whip up to it. We call it the groany arm because uh <laughs> Zach Gronwald just does it. Yeah. Like it's his thing. And he's you can take his so arm good from, out of it. Like on one side of his body and then just trace his shoulders and then snap out in like the fastest. It's like way. a really it's strong wet whip. noodle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like al dente. Zach you know? is yeah. a really strong it's wet like, noodle. Yeah. It, <laughs> but it, actually, if you, yeah, you watch him climb, like watch him do that boulder on Vimeo and you'll be like, that's what's a really strong limp noodle. <laughs> <laughs> and he just crushes it. Uh, yeah, and I, I figured it out, and I yeah. did the move a bunch of times, and did it from a couple moves in, and now I like I'm like okay, now I know how to do all the moves. Now I just have to do like four moves that I find really hard that re require a lot of attention, and I have to do them all in a row, and the weather has to be like somewhat okay, and all well, that. That. <laughs> that that one move off the crimp in the seam, just so people have a reference point roughly you know not you don't have to look through your training logs or anything but roughly how many days did you spend just trying to figure out that move four this year yeah in a bunch last year probably five last year and three the year before and you stuck it like one time by accident last year yeah yeah, and I did. I did those, all the moves last oh, something year. Something worked, but I <laughs> yeah, was it? But I didn't do. There were like three moves that I, I guess technically I did them. Like I went from one hold into the other hold and held it, but it, I didn't do them in a way that would ever allow me 
to do the next move. So like, did you really do the move? No, right, I didn't. Right. But two days ago and today, I did every move and like linked every move together and you, you finally know, found all the positions and like, okay, <clears throat> here it is. I know how to do it. Now it's time to do it. Yeah. So multiple, you know, nine, 10 sessions on one single move, just figuring out the position. One, yeah, not, yeah, just, yeah, just figuring out how to like hang off of one hold. Like it's silly. It's but so I, but silly. But I think it's important. But I it's, it's super, important yeah, it's important to, to me, but like, like, come on, dude, like. That the answer isn't just to get stronger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. not. Sometimes you just have to be like, I know I can do it and I'm going to do it until I do it. Like, however long that takes, <laughs> yep. I'm going to figure it out. That's definitely the quote that's going at the beginning of yeah. this show. <laughs> I know I can do it, and I'm going to do it until, until I, I do, do it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this might sound really corny, but a couple of weeks ago, I stopped thinking, like, I don't think I can do that. And I started just saying, like, I don't get it. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, that's exactly what's happening. Because I feel like I'm strong enough to do, like, probably anything. <clears throat> At this point. Yeah, like, but, like honestly, I just don't get how to do it. Yeah, so and I, I think if you it. if you start with that, you start then running through the options. Exactly, and start yeah. trying new things. If you immediately just admit I don't get it, yeah, you start trying every possible position or yep, and that's you know, exactly holding the hold slightly different or moving yeah. your hips into a different place or whatever. Yeah, you know, you you look at all the options. Exactly. So, is there an overriding philosophy for this POE? Is there something <laughs> that you think embodies it? No <sighs> rules. No rules. There are rules. <laughs> but the first rule is that there's no rules. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We, we, tr- we keep trying to make like the basic rules of climbing and we keep coming up with like ridiculous stuff. Like yeah. there's like five rules and the first rule is that there's no rules. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the second rule is like POE. Um, but what what no rules means is that like any way you can get into the right positions, like do it. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's no, there's no, um, I got I, my, I, no words. I got you my, got I got my Bruce okay. quote lined up. Do it. Fire away. Bruce has the words. I was trying to prompt Bruce. you for this. So yeah. I'm glad you figured it out. Bruce has the words. <laughs> uh, Bruce Lee, in case you hadn't heard. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man. Anyway. Uh, so this this is a, a quote from Bruce Lee that I think perfectly kind of sums it up. It's, man, the living creature, the creating individual, is always more important than any established style or system. And I think that's that's what that's I'm trying it. to say. Like, yeah, I think I think we can just stop there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> let let Bruce wrap it up. Yeah. Drop the mic, Bruce. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks. Sweet. I don't know about you guys, but that was definitely a ton of fun for me. I know we all had a great time in there, and we actually had a room full of people while we were recording that podcast, so it was a lot of fun to kind of share that, you know, that energy with all those people, and and that's led to the idea of doing live podcasts. So I think we're going to continue that. But but anyway, I really really appreciate what Will and and Roland bring to the table in the sense that they're not so focused on just the uh, you know the physical training aspect the the lifting weights or the campusing or the hangboarding they're they're very focused on the practice of it Um, and, and the position over everything idea is something that I've I've explored my entire climbing career I've always said you know to everybody that I've worked with don't don't climb from hold to hold, climb from position to position. And I think that's really important to really look into in your own climbing um, and figure out if that's what you're doing. And if not, you know, step your game up. Um, you can find uh, Will at willanglin.squarespace.com and at tensionclimbing.com. I uh, just checked on Roland's Facebook. He is still single. So, ladies, you're definitely going to want to check out Roland. Uh, you can find us at powercompanyclimbing.com. You can support us on Patreon. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. But no Twitters. We don't tweet. We scream like eagles. <laughs>
Maybe don't know. Maybe don't. This time, 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 this